Hi Drafting 10. In this lesson we are going to learn about a couple of drilled hole types that you're going to need to know for doing our sectioning unit. And those two bore types are called countersinks and counter bores. So I'll show you an example here from our drafting booklet. Uh, the first full sectional view exercise or example that we're going to do together has an instance of both. So you'll notice at the top here I've got a bunch of information about something that's called the CSK and that's called the countersink. It's got information like diameter of 10, 30 deep, an 82 degree countersink and 7 deep. So we've got a lot of information there and we've got two depths and you have to understand how to turn those uh, this information into an appropriate countersink. On the lower section of this, we've got counter bores. That's actually a C there. So we've got a 20 C bore, 10 deep, and the two holes indicate these two holes. But we also have a diameter of 13. So we're going to turn this information into uh, an appropriate counter bore. In order to demonstrate this, I'm just going to go to my AutoCAD web app and we're just going to treat this uh, this white rectangle here as some sort of block. It could be metal, it could be wood, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to show you how to prepare this for a front view, a front sectional view, a full sectional view, and what these counter bores and counter sinks might look like. Counter bore is the easier of the two, so we'll look at that first. What a counter bore will look like is a hole that is offset or that is that is uh, drilled into the object that has a rectangular shape so you know something like this and the idea is that this doesn't work out perfectly but the idea is that there is a bolt a machine bolt of some type that will slot perfectly into that and this area at the bottom is threaded so you'll screw it in and the head of that bolt will be flush with the top of the object. So that's what a counter bore will look like and you obviously have to have certain dimensions. You have to have a diameter for the top part, you have to have a diameter for the threaded part, and then you also have to have a depth for the entire thing, how far does it go into the object, as well as a depth for this head portion. So that's why we have all of that information. A counter sink looks a little different, it's the same idea, but the, the uh, heads of the bolts that go into a countersink have, oops, have a different shape. Instead of being 90 degree angles, you're going to see something like this. This might not match up perfectly, but I think you'll get the idea. So it'll be something like this. The same idea, the bottom part is threaded, the top part is the head of the screw or the bolt, and this is supposed to sink right into the material, so again, the very top of the bolt or the screw is flush with the top of the object. And for this one, you notice we have angled portions, and those angled portions are what that uh, degree measurement for the countersink is. So, we just want a quick review. This one up here is a C bore or counter bore. Make that a little bigger. A little bigger than that. Right. So that's a counter bore. And this one over here is a counter sink. CSK, counter sink, as in sinking into the wood or, or material and pouring into the material. Okay, so these were just uh, quick sketches. Let's actually get to our feed block so I can show you an example of how these would work. We're going to start with the counter bores and um, we'll just do one of them because these two are exactly alike. So I need a center point. Um, I'm drawing this from the front view, so it's a section view, I essentially imagine running a band saw right through the middle of this object, so it's cut in half lengthwise, and we're going to be looking at it from the front view, so we're basically looking at it from this, from this length here, and uh, so what we're going to see is this cut in half, so we're actually not going to see any circles, it's all going to look rectangular. All right, let's get to this information here, Count, uh, diameter 13, 20 C bore, 10 deep, two holes. 
So we have a depth for this counterbore, but what that depth actually refers to is the depth of the head. Okay? And if we don't see another depth measurement, then we can assume that it goes all the way through the bottom of the object. So we've got a depth of 10, and that's just going to be the head portion of the bolt. And then we've got these other two measurements. So our diameter 13, it looks like it's pointing to the outside of the counterbore, but actually, because we've got a 20 in front of the C bore, this 20 is the indicator of the outside um, width or diameter of the larger hole, so the hole for the head, and the 13 is actually referring to the narrower part where it is threaded at the bottom. So you got to be a little bit careful when you're reading your counterbore measurements. So let's put this into practice. We know at the very top of our object, our counterbore is going to be 20 in diameter. So let's flip back over to our drawing. And what we need is we need to have some sort of starting point. Let's call it the center of the object. And I'm just going to go to my layers menu and I'm just going to throw a quick center line in. And it doesn't really matter where I start in this object. I'll start uh, right here. Hopefully that gives me enough space. So we're going to treat this as the dead center of our counter bore. And we indicated that it should be a diameter of 20. So it's going to have um, a radius of 10 at the top or a diameter of 20. It doesn't really matter which one you pick. You're going to draw these in object lines. So I'm going to take an object line. And then what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to, because I know it's 20 and I know the center is there, I'm just going to draw a horizontal line 20 in length here. And obviously my scale is super small on this drawing. So I'm just going to bring this down here. Zoom in a little bit. So this is a line of 20 in length. I'm just going to grab it from the middle and then I'm going to place the middle there. That way I don't have to um, make two lines, you know, drawing five this way and five the other way. I'll just draw the one line. So there's our 20 in diameter. Now let's look back and see what additional information we have. We have 10 deep. So that's going to be the head of the object. It's going to be 10 deep. So that's going to be a vertical measurement. And we can offset that uh, with this line or we can just take our object, whoops, okay, take our object line, draw a line from here, straight down 10, and then do the same thing on the other side, straight down 10. And then we just need to know how far to go in to narrow it. Now your, your counter bore head bolt when in a section view is actually always going to have a line straight across all the way across to the end. So you might as well draw that in right now. We've drawn the head portion. So the head of the bolt, which is wider than the threaded part, is going to fit perfectly into our block right here. So it's flush with the top of the block. And at this point, I can probably get rid of that red line. It was just used as a construction line. I don't really need it anymore. I'll zoom back in. All right, so we've got our, our diameter for the head. We've got our depth for the head. Now we use this other information. Oops. We use our other information here to finish it up. Because we don't have a second depth measurement, we need to assume that it goes right to the bottom of the object. So we need to know uh, how, what it narrows to, which is 13 in diameter. Okay, so I approach this the exact same way I did the top diameter. I would just draw a line horizontal that I know is going to be 13. And then I can just grab it, just grab it and paste it dead center. And now I do have more than one line there, but I can get rid of that second one later. We don't really want generally want to have lines on top of each other, but I needed to know where this section went. So this goes all the way through the object. My object is really large right now, so if I zoom out, and that's just a scale thing because I just wanted an example. So I'm just going to send this counter bolt down 100. Yeah, maybe 50 is fine. Okay, and then I'm going over another 13, and then I'm going up to where it meets the object. So in this case, I actually added a dimension to this. I added another depth. I, I added a 50 deep. Um, because just because the object scale is so off, I didn't want to have this tiny little bolt running all the way through this huge object. So um, I added arbitrarily added another depth there. So that's a counterbore. You can see it's got the rect or the uh, rectangular head all 90 degrees. It's got the outer counterbore diameter. It's got the inner counterbore diameter, and that's all you need to do for them. 
When you are submitting your final drawing, just like circles, these will have a center line running through the middle. So you're going to want to go to your center line when you're done everything. And you're going to want to just make sure that you extend it a little bit beyond and then a little bit beyond at the top. Once again, my scale for this, oops, don't change the angle. My scale for this object is huge. So when I'm looking at my center line here, I'm not seeing any of the normal uh, short dash, long dash, short dash, and that's just a line uh, scale thing. So you can always go back into your layer and then you can go to your properties for that layer or you can just select the line and go to the properties for that. And you've got a line type scale and I need to make this smaller, I believe. So maybe I'll go point uh, one, which is 10%. And let's see what that looks like. Nope, still can't see it. Maybe I needed to go the other way. 10? Nope, still can't see it. So we need to have, oh, line type continuous. That shouldn't be continuous. That should be center. There we go. And then bring my scale back down to one. There we go. So I have my, uh, for some reason, I had my line type is continuous, but for center lines, we know that we should have that uh, long dash, short dash. So there you go, that would be a counter bore based upon those measurements. Now we're gonna to go to the counter sink, which is a bit more difficult, but once you get the process down, it shouldn't be bad. So for our counter sink, we have two depths. We have the depth of the head portion, which is a vertical depth, even though this is on an angle. And then we've got a depth for the entire hole. So it doesn't go all the way through the block. This one only goes down 30 from the very top of the object. Okay? Now we have an opening diameter of 10, an opening diameter of 10, but that's actually referring to this inner diameter. Okay? The outer diameter for this, we have to figure out when we do an 82 degree countersink. So I'll show you how we're going to handle that. We said that it was 30 deep and the head was 7 deep. So let's just kind of take, uh, let's, let's take care of that first. So I'm just going to copy this center line over because I know I'm going to need one for my new object. And let's start with what we know about this object. We know that it goes down 30 for sure. So I could draw myself a con line that goes down 30. If I wish, maybe I'll use this center line or this center and that needs to go down 30. So this is the entire depth of that piece, including the head portion goes down to there. Now I also know that the inner threaded diameter is 10. So I can take care of that too. And I'm going to do it with construction lines for now because I'm going to have to delete some stuff at the top. So I'm just going to take care of the diameter 10. Okay, I'm going to put that, I'm going to grab it from the middle. Oops, grab it from the middle. I'm going to put that right flush with the top of the object. And then I'm going to draw a few more construction lines down just to indicate that that's somewhere in that neighborhood there is where our threaded portion is going to be when we're done. We know that the head portion, okay, the head portion is seven deep. So from the top of the object, we need to go seven down. I could offset this line again and, and, uh, and do, that, do it that way. I'm just gonna grab a red construction line. So it looks different than the others. And then I'm gonna go down 10. 10 was 10 or seven, but I'm gonna go down seven. And then I'm going to go across just to indicate that's where okay, that's where this portion of the um, that's where the portion of the head or the, the depth of the head will go down to. So it's going to be some sort of angle in here. The problem is, is we don't know how wide the very top of the hole is going to be. We actually have to figure that out using our countersink angle, which is 82 degrees in this kind of an odd angle. And what the 82 degrees means is it's actually measuring, if I go back up to the example, it's actually measuring the angle between these two portions. Now this won't be 82 degrees because I just, uh, I just kind of randomly came up with something. But if you measure between there and there, that angle is the countersink angle. So this one is a 60 degree, okay? but I want mine to be 82 degrees. So it's actually going to flare out a little bit more this way. The question is, how do I figure out, okay, how do I figure out what angle to draw these lines at in order to make that work? Okay, now there's just a tiny little bit of math involved here, but it's, it's pretty simple stuff. So I'm just going to make a straight line, which is 180 degrees. 
if I want to have two angles, or if I want to have something like this, where there's an angle between those two lines, I need to take in a, into account the angle here, as well as the angle on the outside. And both of the angles on the outside are going to be the same if we've done this. I'm just going to create a random, well, it's not really random because I'm using my snaps, but this should be right there. That's a 45, and I assume the other line's a 45 as well. So if a straight line is 180 degrees, let's just look at what we've got here between these angles. I've got, between that and that, I've got 38 degrees from here. Maybe I did do this too randomly. To there, I've got... I think maybe this line isn't actually 45 degrees. I just wanted to use my snap so I can get some nice round numbers for my angles. I think maybe I didn't make this 45, so we'll make it 45. Uh, there's 45. All right, so I go back and measure my angles again. Click one line, click the other line. Sometimes it defaults to measuring a linear distance when you want it to measure an angle. I think you just gotta wait till it gets to the square. Okay, so that's 45, like it should be. And we'd like to see the same thing over here. So except this one should be 90, because it's 245s, right? So there's our 90. Which means that this last one should be 45 as well. So there's something seriously wrong. Square, make sure it's a square. Okay, so there's our other 45. So you add the 90 and 245s, you get 180 degrees. So this, we're going to use the same sort of principle when we're drawing the 82 degree angle when we're drawing these lines. What we're going to do is we're actually going to figure out what this angle needs to be in order for us to have 82 on the outside. Okay, so our entire angle in here being 82, how much more do we need to add how much more do we need to add in order to uh, in in order to have two equal angles on the outside and an 82 degree degree angle on the inside? So let's just let's put out the math here, and you don't have to do this math every time. We just we're just doing it once to demonstrate where the angle came from. So if our angle is okay, a straight line is 100 degrees, and that's going to be the sum of those three angles. So we've got two times x. So whatever this angle here is, it's going to be x plus 82 degrees, right? So if we add our 82 plus the other two angles, we should get 180 degrees or a straight line. So that's how we're going to work this. All right, now we just solve the equation just like you would in math. 180 minus, one, uh, sorry, minus 82 is going to be 98. So 98 equals 2x, which means that each angle equals 49 degrees. So if we draw two lines, 49 degrees here and 49 degrees here, we should have 82 degrees in the middle. Again, if math's not your gig, don't worry about it too much. I'm just demonstrating how you're going to get that 82 degree countersink. So we don't want a 90 degree, we want an 82 degree. So let's just delete all this stuff and let's use that new information that we have to see if we can draw those two lines. So I know that the line, wherever it starts down here, okay, needs to be at 49 degrees. So how am I going to type in a 49 degree angle? Okay. Remember, you have to hit tab to go to the angular portion, and then we're going to put 49 degrees. And what that's going to do is it's going to lock it to 49 degrees. And then on the other side, it doesn't matter where I start down here, I can start anywhere I want. It's kind of trying to link me to the midpoint of that, but let's just say for sake of argument, I wanted to start it there at that intersection instead. Okay. It doesn't matter if you start it attached here or you start it anywhere on this line. Okay, now here's the, here's the question now. It's measuring from this angle, so it's measuring up this way and over this way. I know it needs to be over here somewhere and I know it needs to be 49 degrees from this line. So how do I do that? Do I have to do more math here? 90 degrees plus something to get an angle down here. Actually, you can just type in a negative angle and it'll do it. So I can just tab over. Okay? I can tab over to the angular portion. I can type in negative 49. And then it's going to lock that. Oops, wrong way. 
rock. It's gonna it, it's gonna um, put that the, the the proper way for us. And at this point, I can just move that line. So I can grab this line and just bring it up there. And now I should have an angle of 82 between those. I'm just gonna get rid of this. And maybe I'll draw one more line just to indicate that you know perhaps the top of my countersink was right there just to make it a little neater. Trim it up. So there's our countersink and if we've done things properly and I measure the angle in between these two it should be 82 degrees now. So if I can start here and I go to there, 82 degrees perfect. Okay so this one thus should be 49. That should be 49. It is, and this one will be 49 as well. Except, if you think about it, there it's 49. Okay. So what angle did I, should I really have drawn this at if I wanted to have it you know, go in place perfectly instead of going down here and moving it? Um, you can figure that out pretty easily just by clicking the line and then clicking this line and it's 131 degrees. So if you use 49 degrees and 131 degrees, these two lines will give you an inner angle of 82 degrees, which is gonna, you know, a fairly common countersink angle. Okay, so a little bit of math there. Hopefully didn't drive anybody too crazy with it, but let's use what we learned there to see if we can finish off this countersink. So we know it starts here and we know it goes out to there somewhere. But we do know the angle, and that's the important thing. So we'll go and draw a white line this time, because it's going to be an actual object line. We're going to start it at the depth point 0.7 there. We know it goes up here somewhere. Let's not, uh, let's not snap it to anything. Let's bring it past, and let's make sure that angle is perfect. So I'm past the, the top of the object. I'm going to hit Tab, Key, to move over to the angle. I know that angle needs to be 49 degrees, so there it is. That's a perfect 49 degree angle from you know, this red line here. From there to there is 49 degrees and then we figured that the other one was 131 degrees which is fine so I'll just make sure that it's passed and then we'll go 131 and there is your 131 now you can just trim go to your modify go to your trim tool get rid of that extra portion that we don't need get rid of that extra portion we don't need and then let's check our angle so between here And here should have 82 degrees. So you know, monkey with it a little bit, but no, just missed it. Just missed it. Here. There, finally. Ah! Missed it again. One of the annoying things about unfortunately about the web version as much as you can do little things like this are a little bit more frustrating than they would be if you were using the desktop version okay there we go I can see it's 82 degrees so it's perfect so now what did we actually figure out we I mean we've drawn it properly and that that was our goal uh, but what we didn't know which would have made it a lot easier is if we knew what that distance was because then we could just connect one line here to one line there and we wouldn't have to worry about making sure our lines were 82 degrees. But in this drawing, they didn't give us that. They only gave us the diameter of the bottom portion, which was 10. If they'd given us this top portion, then we didn't have to monkey around with any of the 82 degree stuff. In most cases, they actually, they won't give you that information, so you will have to use this technique. That's why it's important to practice it. What is the actual measurement up at the top here? I bet it's something gross. I bet it's got decimals in it. So let's just double check here. Okay, uh, it happens to be 22.17 degree or uh, in length. So obviously that's not a very nice measurement. It's not something you'd want to include on a schematic drawing for something. All right, I'm going to get rid of that measurement there. And then let's just complete the bolts because we've just got a couple more lines to make on the countersink. And we know it narrows to 10 and then we know it goes down 30 and we got 30 right there. So I'm just going to hit the end of that line and then trace it over using my snaps. Bang, bang, okay, and then when we turn off our con lines, or hide our con lines, okay, you just have to add the 
this line here. Okay, and we should probably update our center line because it looks like it's way too long. So I'll just grab my center line, bring it back up so that it just goes through the object a little bit at the bottom. And there we go. There's your countersink. Your 82 degree countersink goes down uh, 10, or was it 10? 30. 30, goes down 30. Head should be seven deep. So from there to there, seven. From the top to the bottom is 30. And these angle to 82, which gave us our countersink. And ideally, the bolt that we're going to sink into this material will end up with the head being perfectly flush with the surface so there's no ridge. Uh, there's no ridge to rub against anything. So there's counter bore on the left, there's countersink on the right, and you should have, uh, you should have enough information to try to uh, re recreate these when you need to on any of your drawings now, not just your sectional drawings.